Hi, I'm Kat, the ACT expert at Magoosh. I have over 15 years teaching and tutoring students, and I love helping students ace the ACT. Today we're going to be going over 10 tips to help you on the science section of the ACT exam. Tip number one for the science section is don't panic. So it is true that you only have 35 minutes to answer 40 questions on the science section. They're split across six passages, but you know that now, right? So when you actually go in to take the exam, there's no surprises there. Stay level-headed. With enough prep, you can do really well on this section. Many people, including me, say that this is actually the section where practice is going to raise your score the most. So focus on good practice and focus on keeping a cool head on test day. Tip number two, bubble in an answer for every question. So you might not know the answer for every question, and there might even sometimes be a question where you can't use process of elimination that well to um, narrow in on the correct answer, or maybe you just find yourself running out of time. But never leave anything blank. And this is true of all the sections, by the way. You never get deducted points if you answer incorrectly. Therefore, you should always answer something because you'll have at least a 25% chance of getting that question right. And actually, I happen to believe that your chances are probably even a little bit above 25% through guessing because your intuition kicks in a little bit. So leave nothing blank and make sure you give yourself at least like 20 seconds at the end of the section so that you can go through and make sure there aren't any blanks for that exam section. Tip number three, save the conflicting viewpoints passage for last. So you're going to see six passages on the ACT science test and five of them are going to look very similar to one another. They're gonna be findings from different scientific studies. You'll probably see a lot of graphs, charts, diagrams. One of these passages is going to look very different. It's going to be almost all text and you're going to be reading about different scientific perspectives around a given phenomenon. So this takes a little longer. You have to go more slowly. You have to read the text more closely. Therefore, you want to make sure that you get all the quick questions answered first so that you have all those in the bag before you go and devote that extra focus and time to the conflicting viewpoints, which you will answer last. Tip number four, skim, dissect, analyze. Okay, so what I mean by that is you want to skim the passage. Don't read the passage. Skim the passage and then you dissect the actual question that's in front of you. You try and make sense of what you're being asked. What do you analyze? The analysis comes in when you actually go to the figures and graphs and charts that relate to the question you're being asked. Okay, and the reason this is really important is because a lot of students spend too much time reading the passage, they run out of time, and in contrast, they're not reading the question itself closely enough. So just keep in mind, you want to skim the passage, dissect the question, and analyze any graphs, charts, or diagrams. Tip number five, pay attention to which numbers you're given when they reference a figure number or a trial number or an experiment number. So this sounds like a simple thing, right? And probably a lot of you are maybe just rolling your eyes like, well, of course, you know, don't wanna make a simple mistake. But a lot of students make the mistake of accidentally referencing the wrong graph or chart. Some of these passages have like five or six graphs and charts and they purposely try and mess you up. So they will talk about something with um, sodium phosphate. And you'll remember, oh yeah, sodium phosphate, that was an experiment one. But if you read the question closely, they're actually directing you to experiment two. All right, so they're, they're going to really be testing you on how closely and carefully are you reading the instructions. Tip number six, when you're interpreting a graph, look at the axes first. And this is really important because some of these graphs are set up in kind of weird counterintuitive ways. We're used to reading graphs that usually um, start kind of in the bottom left and go up towards the right, upper corner. On the ACT, sometimes the axes are going to be 
somewhat reversed. They're going to be almost like rotated 90 degrees. And instead of seeing a line that goes this way, you'll see something like a squiggly line that's going from top to bottom. It's purposely trying to disorient you. And the way you make sure you don't make mistakes on these is you look at the axes first and you make sure you can figure out exactly which values are, are pointing horizontally and which values are guiding your eyes vertically. So don't get thrown off on the exam if you see a graph or chart that looks nothing like you're used to seeing. Tip number seven is another detail point, and that is you want to make sure that you line up your values really precisely when you're trying to read the numerical value for a given data point. So you might see something that seems like so easy, you're so excited because it's gonna be such a quick, easy question, such as, um, at minute number 73, what was the temperature of sample B or something like that? And you know that all you have to do is look at the minutes down here, the temperatures up here, and find where they intersect. Unfortunately, if you look at the answer choices you're given, it's likely that they will all be just fractions of one number away from each other. And so the way you want to keep this straight and make sure you get the right answer, I recommend, is you actually use your Scantron itself. So you, here you have a perfectly straight line right in front of you, right? So actually line it up with the lines on the graphs so that you know your answer is 82.6 and not 82.2. These particular questions are actually testing you on how detail-oriented you can be, especially under a time crunch. Tip number eight is understand what's being asked of you when you get what's called a trends question. You're going to see several questions that ask you something about the direction of a set of scientific findings. For instance, um, pressure or temperature. They'll ask you, did the temperature between trials one and trial three increase only, decrease only, increase and decrease, or decrease and increase? Something along that lines, patterns. The trick here, and the way sometimes students get a little bit tripped up, is that they only look at what happened in the beginning, say in trial one, and then what happened at the end, trial three. And if they see that the pressure or temperature is higher in three, they're inclined to choose the answer increase only. But you actually do need to pay attention to all the data points in between those endpoints. And if at any given point there was a decrease in temperature or pressure, your answer will not be increase only. So it's that extra word, the word only, is important to pay attention to. You will see it on the science section and you want to take it into consideration when you come up with your answer so that you don't get tripped up. Tip number nine is to draw your own little charts when you're being asked to compare one trial or experiment to another. I've been noticing more and more questions like this on the ACT science test, where you're basically having to synthesize like 10 different data points. They will say something like, um, Let's look at these five elements from trial one to trial two, and you tell me which of them converted from a gas to a liquid between trial one and trial two. It's not that complicated of a question, but you have to pay attention to 10 different data points and then figure out what the right answer is. Always keep in mind that you can and you should write on your test booklet. So whether this is crossing out wrong answers or drawing little charts, make use of your test booklet, draw on it, it's yours to use. Tip number 10 is don't get bogged down by exponents or subscripts. There will be some questions on the ACT science section that ask you to do a little bit of math. And a lot of times these are in the form of exponents. So being able to say is uh, 6.3 to the negative fifth power, is that value larger or smaller than some other value over here? However, most questions that show you exponents are not math questions at all. You don't have to calculate anything. So unless you're being asked to slow down and calculate something, don't worry about the exponents too much. Just see it as a symbol, focus on the graphs and the charts, 
and only slow down and do that math work when you need to. And that leads me to the bonus tip for this video, which is don't spend too much time studying science. You might have noticed that these tips I'm giving you have very little to do with science and a whole lot to do with synthesizing information and not making mistakes. So the ACT science section does not test you on your scientific knowledge aside from a few core areas. And if you go down below, you can see the link to the Magoosh flashcards. And there you can review all the science concepts that could potentially appear on the exam. The most important thing is to get plenty of practice, practice under timed conditions, and keep a cool head, because you've got this. If you like this video, follow the link in the description box below and go to magoosh.com where you can join thousands of students who are already using Magoosh to ace the ACT. And if you're looking for more last minute tips, check out the videos on your left. And I'll see you in the next one.